I'm trying not to be too blown away when things come up. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna get started because I know John has a cool program for us. So please feel free to grab your food and sit down. Thank you again to Cynthia who does a wonderful job organizing these. Everybody knows Cynthia German. Um, and for the healthy food that we have presented here, which goes along with our program today. I'd like to introduce to you John Lamazny. Many of you probably know him. He's manager of OIT, Instructional Technology. Did I get that right? Sure. Okay. Any of you who know John know that he's a completely different person today than he was three years ago now? How long? It's about three years. About three years. And um, when I was asking for people within the institution to be able to do some training, I heard from John, among others, and we thought it would be a wonderful experience to hear from him how he has this incredible and healthy weight loss. So without further ado, here's John Matt. Thank you very much. This, this is a wonderful opportunity for me because um, I love running, and, and I really, I thought it was fantastic when people came up to me over, over time. They said, are you okay? Are you know, okay? Are you all right? Because it has been relatively quick. But then you, I lost over 100 pounds. And so people were concerned. You know, I have friends here, close, close friends, some of the best friends I've met in my life. And they were worried about me. And this is an opportunity for me to clarify, without a doubt, that I was never in pain. <laughs> I, I didn't have to take any medicine. Um, and in fact, I, I think I chose a really healthy approach without really the aid of a nutritionist or without the aid necessarily of a doctor. I, I wasn't consulting with anybody, which may be alarming to some of you. Um, but the learning process that I went through was relatively slow, despite the quick speed with which I lost the weight. Let me tell you why I lost the weight. To be quite honest with you, I would have been very happy to stay the weight that I was until the day that I died, which may have been not too long from now. And the reason for that was that I was happy. I, I liked the food that I ate. I liked my lifestyle. I, I felt guilty from time to time about eating certain things. But generally speaking, I really enjoyed what I ate. And I didn't mind my weight too much. I didn't mind not being able to run. I didn't mind having to breathe heavy when I walked upstairs. Um, but what happened? was that I met him. That's my boy. Just about uh, three years ago. And very quickly, I realized that I didn't want to have a heart attack. And I, I didn't want to not be around for him. I wanted to be around as long as I possibly could. I wanted to make sure I didn't suddenly have to leave him. So these are the things we're going to talk about today. We have a very short amount of time, and I appreciate everybody coming uh, during their lunchtime. This was a great time to get together. And it is fantastic food over there. I really, really appreciate that. That's great. <coughs> we're going to show before and after, because some of you didn't meet me until very recently. And so you may think this is the way that I looked since I was born, but not the case. And after, of course, you see me there. Um, we're going to talk about how many calories you should be eating. Should. And should is a number that you're going to have to determine. It's going to take over. Uh, it's going to take some time for you to determine that number. Um, but also, we're going to talk about how many calories exist in the foods that we eat, which very often we don't know. Very often, we don't have the benefit of a nutrition facts label when we visit a restaurant. Right? There's laws being written right now for that purpose. And I'm a strong advocate of those laws. We're going to talk about it under Defend Your Rights. Um, but knowing the calories in what you're eating is key. It was key for me. It may not be key for you. Maybe you have an amazing metabolism that just churns through whatever calories you throw at yourself. For the rest of us, we have to know what calories we're taking in so that we can count them against the calories we're supposed to be eating for the day. We're going to talk about reading and staying informed because this particular uh, presentation was supposed to be about applying technology to losing weight. I'm not going to necessarily go through a lot of technology topics today. And quite honestly, it's sort of a clumsy combination of bringing technology into this idea of weight loss. But people usually want to hear me speak about technology much, much more than nutrition, and so there's this combination. There's, that's why this presentation is about technology for loss, loss of weight. 
So I talk a little bit about how uh, you can use technology to read and stay informed. Research and nutrition was so important for me. It was not the most important thing up front. It was not the thing, I didn't care about fiber. I really kind of still know. Don't care about carbohydrates versus protein versus fat versus whatever. I care about calories. That's all I care about, really, is when I look at that nutrition facts label, if something has more fat than I should be eating in a day, supposedly, I'm not as concerned about that as it had, if it has too many calories for what I'm supposed to be eating today. But I am going to talk about uh, my findings with uh, research and nutrition. Determining your proper weight. You can't guess at how much you're supposed to weigh. If you do, you'll, you'll make errors about what you're supposed to weigh. There are plenty of people who will tell you what you're supposed to weigh. Usually, we start with something like a BMI, which says if we're this height and this weight, that uh, we have this number, this BMI number, and if we're above or below the standard normal number, then we have to adjust our weight accordingly. I used BMI in order to get to my goal, and it turned out that my goal was kind of low. When I was finished, when I reached my goal of 185 pounds, I was gaunt, and you'll, we'll see that. And people, that's why people were concerned. When they saw me getting down where they could like see my skeleton, they were, they were a little worried for me. And I, I took great grievance. I, I said, you know, I finally lost this weight. I'm finally to my goal. You're, you're upset. You know? It's because my number, my BMI doesn't work. I had to go back up a little bit. We're going to talk about uh, getting great scales. And I brought some scales with me today, and we'll have some fun with that. We're going to talk about learning how to cook, which for me was a great way to get control of knowing what my calories were. When, uh, because everything that I buy at the store has the nutrition facts labeled in the back. So I can take that information and put it into my pan on a hot stove and know exactly what I'm eating. Learning how to cook was important. Journaling and sharing progress. We're going to talk about my journal. Uh, finding support and guidance, which again was me trying to bring in that idea of technology into this. And I did actually use technology quite a bit in uh, gaining social support. Although I had plenty of friends here who were sort of cheering me on and saying, you look fantastic, you know, keep it up. Defending your rights, as I said, I am a strong advocate for laws that say that nutritional information has to be available for the food that you're consuming in a restaurant environment. Because when you don't have it, you're really just guessing. When you go and you eat 3,000 calories and you have no idea you ate 3,000 calories, you're doing yourself a disservice. And the company that is providing you with a $3,000 single serving plate is doing you a disservice too. You should be aware of it and you should fight it. Exercise if you want to. This is probably the most controversial part of what I did, is that while I did exercise, I did not exercise in order to lose weight, I exercised in order to feel better. Quite honestly, today I exercise very, very little. Um, I have friends here who insist that if they're going to lose the weight, I felt the same way, that they have to exercise. I'm here to tell you that you just don't have to. You, you can reduce your calories to the point where you can sit still for 24 hours and you will still lose weight because your number is below the number of calories that are being burned from you standing still, okay? For me, that was a big eye-opener. You should exercise because it makes you feel better. You should exercise because it creates endorphins. You should exercise because it does great things for your body. Don't exercise to lose weight. It's a really horrible way to try and lose weight. And learn about the alternatives. Learn about what it's like to stay like this. me sitting in cranberries before it was cranberry. This is me in Virginia. This is me in New Jersey. This is me in my old office. This is me having a night out. I'm smiling <laughs> in all these pictures. You know, I was happy. I was doing things. I was not running. I was not able to move very quickly. I probably was not enjoying life as much as I should have been, but I didn't know. I was sort of blissfully ignorant to the idea. And I thought, you know, I would like to be my proper weight, but how am I going to do that? You know? I didn't know. Now I know. This is me now. This is me when I finished. This is me when people were concerned for me. I, I really didn't have a lot of energy. I, I was cold all the time. 
which was like a new phenomenon for me, because <laughs> I was always like a, you know, I was always burning excess energy all the time. What do you think these are? Anybody have an idea? How much are you going to eat? Certain foods for the same amount of calories? That's right. How many calories do you think each of these are? It's 200. This is a website, wisegeek.com, that shows hundreds and hundreds of photos of what does 200 calories look like. We know what 100 calories looks like, right? Because there's a new marketing phenomenon in this, right? So if you want to have a snack and you are being, are you, you're becoming aware of caloric information, this is a great tool for you. It means essentially you don't have to guess. You don't have to have a photo of a donut at 200 calories to tell what the, you know, you don't have to slice apart out of it. They give you a donut at 100 calories. They give you a piece of chocolate at 100 calories. They give you a bag of cheese puffs at 100 calories. I don't care if I have to pay four times as much. I'm going to always buy 100 calorie packs because I'm paying attention to calories. They can mark it up as much as they want. I will continue to buy it. That, that was the best marketing scheme they ever came up with for me. Make it 90. Make it, you know, but, but tell me. Tell me up front how much it is. And I'll be able to know and I'll be able to keep on my path. Otherwise, I'm going to eat the whole bar. You know, and it's going to be a 600 calorie bar. And I'm going to have to do some work in order to chop that down to make it a 100 calorie thing. Give me 100 calories in the package. Great. What's in the glass? This is not 200 calories in apple juice, this is 200 calories in vegetable oil. Oh, wow. <laughs> Somebody asked if it was wine. Yeah, I know. But this is not a lot of oil. This is probably a tablespoon and a half or so. Um, and you may be surprised, you're probably not surprised about celery. Celery is mostly water. It's mostly water and fiber and chlorophyll. Um, but a hamburger? I mean, who eats a half a hamburger? So, you have to become aware of these things if you're going to make progress in the way that I made progress anyway. Th this is all about my methodology. Something else may work for you. You may not need to lose weight. I'm just saying. For me, I had to start to learn about these things. We're going to find out now how much you know about these things. How many calories in an average apple? 50. 50? Another? 70. 70? Another? 80. All correct. You know why? Average doesn't mean anything. <laughs> Average doesn't mean anything. And so this is where scales came in very heavily for me, where I was taking a scale with me to a restaurant, looking like a fool, quite honestly, and separating out my meal into different food groups and like weighing them all. But I had to do this in order to gain control. I actually did it at the Christmas party one year. Yeah. Um, not the big one, if you know what you know. And <laughs> an average apple isn't anything, and it's everything. It, it doesn't mean anything. From a caloric standpoint, you need to know how heavy something is in order to tell how many calories there are in it. So how do you do this? Once you have the weight of something, you might have a book like this, a food count book that essentially just has calories for different kinds of food. It says an ounce of apple is whatever. And so we look up. Well, just for simplicity, a um, cup of apple juice is 110 calories. A cup is a measure. Um, if we say an average glass of apple juice, that again does not mean anything because a glass is not an actual measure, right? A cup is a measure. What's a cup of, let's say, Progresso chicken noodle soup? One cup, half a can, one serving. It's about 100 calories. 12 ounce can of soda. Most any soda you'll buy. Pepsi, Coke. 160. 120. Yeah. It's 60. It says 60 on the can, which is one of these things where you're like, no, it says 60. 60 per serving. There's two servings of soda in a can of soda, which is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Most nobody drinks a can of soda. Or a half can of soda. They sell those half cans, which I think is kind of funny, too. Um, 
basically everything here except for the hard part is in the bread, which again is like average. Like, what is what does that mean? You know, what is one slice? How much does it weigh? If you don't know, you don't know. Whereas a teaspoon of mustard, I know, it's five calories. One coffee, one sugar, one cream, it's like 22 calories. Uh, a creamer, yeah, about 22 calories. Maybe 30. Coffee is nothing. Coffee's like 10 calories for a 32 ounce jug. So if you if you start putting a bunch of sugar and cream in it, then it goes way up real quick. So let's talk about my, my political issue again. If you want to um, go to Desert Moon and have a chicken taco, Desert Moon is over in the uh, shopping center with Penang and uh, Book uh, Borders and all that stuff over by where the Walmart is in, on the long room one. Desert Moon chicken taco, has anybody ever been there? I've been to Desert Moon. Have you ever had a taco there? Average. It's pretty average taco. It's, yeah. um, delicious, very, very well done. Uh, bit marked up on price, but it's 220 calories on average. And the reason I know this is because they publicize their nutritional information. They actually put it right in the menu next to certain items. How about Bertucci's margarita style pizza? Anybody ever been to Bertucci's? Yeah, I love Bertucci's. Let's say an entire pie uh, divided into six pieces, one slice. How much of a slice of pie? We have no idea, because Bertucci's decided not to make their nutritional information available. And we're not in the kitchen, so we're not seeing what's going into it. We don't see how many shakes out of this uh, olive oil is going onto that pie. I can tell you it's not one. It's more like five. It's delicious. Delicious stuff. We have no idea if there are really calories in it. And that really bothers me, because from a nutritional standpoint, I feel like I finally have a plan. I know what I'm doing. And Bertucci's makes it hard for me to eat that. So if I have a choice of going to Bertucci's or eating a frozen pizza, unfortunately, I will probably choose the frozen pizza. That being said, I go to Bertucci's quite often. <laughs> um, and there's not a lot of reason for Bertucci's not to make their information available. Papa John's can do it. Pizza Hut can do it. Bertucci says that we're artisans and we cannot make one pie just like the next. Excuse me, that's nonsense. You know, start off with the same amount of dough, the same amount of cheese, and the same amount of oil, and then be an artisan with that. You know, you can make it look pretty, but let me know how many calories are in it because I need to know. I need to control myself. <laughs> One Drake's apple pie. You know the square apple pies? They're little packets of deliciousness. How much in one? Very close, 220, 220 each. They do not make individual servings. <laughs> they put two in a little packet. This is all to say, we don't have a lot of knowledge about this because most of us don't study it. I studied it and I began to get some control over what I was doing. It wasn't until I started to think about calories all the time that I was able to not be obese anymore. 100 calorie pack of cookies, anybody? <laughs> Keep that in mind. Some of my favorite books. Let's talk about why these are my favorite books. What to Eat by Marion Nestle is a book about the business of supermarkets. And it's the idea that if you were to walk into the stop and shop over in Pennington and walk all the way around the outside of the perimeter, you would go down the grocery, the, the produce aisle, and you go through seafood, butcher, dairy, whole foods, you pass the flowers, and you uh, go out to the register and you eat a very nutritious meal, a set of meals that week. We don't do that. We go up and down the aisles. It's designed that way. It's designed that way because it's more likely that you will buy the stuff that is high fat, high sugar, high whatever. They put it at your adult eye level, the stuff that you're most likely to grab on a, on a whim. And they make the more nutritional stuff a little bit harder to get to. But hence the fact that the entrance is furthest away from your whole foods, right? It's 
pretty close to produce, but produce is a high, high income, uh, it makes a lot of money for them. <coughs> so I started to bombard myself with different kinds of ideas, like philosophical ideas and nutritional ideas. And, but again, I was still just paying attention to calories. Volumetrics is a lot about calories. Volumetrics, here's one of the books. said that you can eat this or you can eat this. Which do you want to eat? You know? And the idea is that because this is using lower caloric food, thank you very much. Sorry. If you're throwing a lot of lower caloric food, stir fry that is mostly meat and gravy and onions, or, well, not onions either, meat and gravy and, and spices and whatever, um, and you make it more like a stew than a stir fry, you're doing yourself a disservice. Whereas you start to load that with like really great vegetables, everything takes on the flavor of that core food. That's what volumet volumetrics is about. It's about mixing really low calorie foods, lots of low calorie foods in with a highly dense caloric source, you know, something at the core that really tastes very good. Eat This Not That is about looking at those restaurants and companies that don't make their caloric information available, excuse me, and they would go in and they would um, do their own nutritional testing for particular kinds of food. And they would say, on this menu, even though you have no idea because they don't make their nutritional information available, here's the nutritional information. And what we found is you should not eat this because this is 2,700 calories in one serving. And you should eat this because this is more like 600, which is more reasonable for a single meal. <coughs> eat this, not that. I don't actually own that book, but I love it. Every time I see it, I want to pick it up. Fast Food Nation by Eric Schlosser uh, is a book about the fast food industry. And uh, here it is right here. And it starts off talking about feedlots and really is an extension of, uh, I can't think of the name of the book, the book that um, <coughs> attacked the idea of uh, slaughterhouses in the 80s or so. But anyway, it's a fantastic book and it really makes you think about why you can get a double cheeseburger for a dollar. You know, with the, the fact that we can do that makes it really easy to do that, for, nutritionally speaking. You know, we, we walk into McDonald's and we say, should I pay $3.25 for this, or should I get this other thing, you know? When, when McDonald's makes it easy for us to eat badly, we don't eat badly, and that book talks a lot about it. Eat, drink, and be healthy attacks to the food pyramid idea, that the way that the USDA really is uh, introducing the food pyramid as a way to sell more brains. And, and I, I'm not a um, superstitious, or like I don't think there are government conspiracies necessarily, but that made sense to me. It made sense that if you follow the money, that that pyramid really talks about the money that's going through the USDA, the agricultural business in America. Finally, the first thing that I came across was a free ebook. Uh, called The Hacker's Diet, and it appealed to me because the guy who wrote it is the owner of, uh, he was the one who created AutoCAD. Any of you who know anything about computer-aided drafting or uh, people who draw buildings for a living, they use AutoCAD. The guy who created AutoCAD um, wrote this book, and he lost more weight than I lost. And he essentially laid out the ways that he did it, and they, it changed the way that I felt about weight loss. It made me realize what a calorie was. It made me realize that I did not need to exercise. It made me realize that um, diet, the diet industry is more about money than it is about your health. And that's unfortunate, but it's true. Um, so there are lots of ways to begin to talk about these nutritional ideas. You, you have to find the ones that appeal to you and start to research in this way. 
Hacker's Diet, I would recommend to anybody. I'm just going to let you gaze at this for a second. So begin to talk about the idea that our culture has a lot to do with our size and the ease of food for us, the, the way that we're all sort of surrounded by food all the time, the, the way that we are able to basically eat whatever we want, whenever we want, as many times as we want during the day, the fact that we don't pay attention to meal times very much anymore, the fact that we are always in our cars, or always sitting, or always doing whatever it is that we want to do at this particular moment, makes it very easy to eat in a very bad way. Um, nutrition facts label, and I just want to reinforce the idea that this number is more important to me than this number, more important to me than any of these numbers. Um, I pay a little bit more attention to these now, but this is really the only thing that I strongly pay attention to when I look You're at pointing the pointing to the calories, right? I'm, Not pointing, the total fat. I'm pointing to calories, calories yes. Right. I just can't reach it. <laughs> <laughs> so, we have to begin to realize what nutrition is. And even though it was not important to me at the beginning, it's very important to me now. Um, so BMI, if you don't know what your BMI is, I don't wanna know, does anybody know what their BMI is? Okay. So if you don't know what it is, you can go to one of hundreds of calculators. And for example, I'm six foot two. I'm currently at 195, which means that I'm 25. My BMI is 25, which puts me in the overweight range. This is because this is not taking into account my my frame. It's not taking into account you know. It's not taking into into account anything about me, but. This is how I came to my realization of what my goal should be. And what it ended up being was 185. Oops. Which, put, which puts me just inside that normal weight category, 23.8. When I was 185, it was that lower uh, corner picture that you saw where I was like gaunt. I was going by the numbers. And the numbers were treating me very well throughout my entire process. And so uh, who was I to question? It wasn't until I really realized I didn't have any energy, I was cold all the time, there was something wrong. When I, when I came back up from that to a healthy 195 for me, uh, I felt a lot better. What is BMR? BMR is basal metabolic rate. Basal metabolic rate is another calculation. This calculation is actually pretty accurate for me. If I go and say I'm a male, I'm look, six foot two inches, and I'm one nine five. I'm thirty four. number of calories that I will burn if I do nothing today. This is the number of calories I'll do standing still. I've not been standing still today, have I? I've been running around. My number is really about 2,000. So I know that I'm safe, quote unquote safe. I will stay at my standard current weight if I go do that. You can go and use this calculator. As a matter of fact, if you go to womasney.com, you'll see this presentation. You can click on all the links I'm clicking on today and all the links that I did not click on today. And you can do this all for yourself. Um, and I'm, I'm not making any money or anything off these sites, these are just links, okay? Um, but what this tells me is that if I eat 2,200 calories today, over time I'm gonna gain. If I eat 1,700 calories in a day, 
continuously, over time I'm going to lose. That's all. I mean, it's a very simple idea. And counting calories is the key to it. You, and once you know this number, you have part of the equation. It may be difficult for you, or you may think that it will be difficult for you. For me, it was more difficult to continue to live with all that extra weight than to write down some numbers all day long. I want to touch on this idea. The reason that, uh, in that, where we had pictures of 200 calories, it had a little tiny thing of butter and a little tiny thing of oil, and it had a big old pile of asparagus or whatever it was. This is part of the reason, because uh, fat is more calorically dense than carbohydrates are. Carbohydrates and protein are equally calorically dense. If you have a really fatty piece of meat, there's going to be a mix between the protein and the fat in that meat. If you uh, happen to use rum in pre preparation of your meat, it's going to have a lot of extra calories. So when somebody tells me from my caloric, from my nutritional standpoint that I shouldn't be eating carbs, I think that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. I, I really don't like Atkins, uh, but I'm very biased towards that. I think you should eat whatever it is that you want to eat because that's the way that you're going to need to eat for the rest of your life. I did not go on a diet. I made a nutritional life change. I, I really, this is the way I plan to live for the rest of my life. And I plan to live for as long as I possibly can. Right? Um, I do not believe in reducing one kind of food versus another. I, I solely believe that when you eat what you want, you're happy with what you're eating, you will continue to be able to eat that way. I bring this slide in as a way of reminding us about um, our self body image and finding an external way to determine your proper weight. Remember, we did BMI, and according to BMI, I'm, I'm overweight. According to this formula, which I found at the New York Times in the health section, it says, for men, 106 pounds body weight for the first five feet of height, plus six pounds for each additional inch. Uh, for a small body frame, 10% subtracted. For a large frame, 10% be added. You determine your frame, a, a rule of thumb, no pun intended is to take your thumb and your forefinger and put them around your wrist. If you cannot touch your thumb to your forefinger, you have a large frame. If you can just touch your thumb to your forefinger, you have a average frame. And if you can overlap, you have a small frame. Okay. According to this, I'm underweight. I should be 209 pounds, which I think would be too much weight for me, quite honestly. But there are lots of calculators for this too. And you will find ones that put you at 220, that would put me at 220, and some that would put me at 170. Some of them are just not reasonable. But many of them are very nice, and you will find one that works for you. But you have to get in that range to start working towards that goal. And you have to establish that goal. You can't just guess, oh, I'm supposed to be 150 pounds. No, I, at 150 pounds, I would look sick. I would look really, really, really sick. So. Measurement. What is a reliable body scale? Does anybody have a reliable body scale? Anybody have a body scale that they really like? Homedics. Homedics is a good brand, very good brand. Yeah, and it seems to be reliable in that <coughs> uh, they measure up with my doctor's office says, and then day to day, I think it's telling you which is, right. unfortunately, it's telling you. <laughs> Um, telling you the truth is a, is a key. And one of the ways you can tell very quickly if, you, if the scale that you have is a good one, step on it, note the number, step off, step back on again, note the number, step off, step back on again, note the number, step off. If you have the same number three times, you're good. So, but Homedics probably has like a body fat, fat index and yeah, like yeah, all kinds I of things. I got the really basic. I, and I would love to get that, but I can't really convince Tom that I'm going to spend it. <laughs> um, what you don't want is the scale that I got at Ikea on a whim, where it was like a $5 scale or something. You step on it, and you step, you could step on it 10 times and get 10 different numbers. It's really poor. So, my favorite object for most of that year was this year. This is a pole. 
older digital food scale. And what it did was it recorded ounces and grams, and it came with its own tray, and then the tear it out, so I could put like a dish on top of this, tear it out, so that it was zero, and then put food into that dish and know exactly how many uh, ounces or grams of food that I had. This may seem fanatical to you, um, but once you start to lose weight, I mean, you become fanatic. You say, how do I continue to do this? This is how I continue to do it. And I uh, put it in here with a calculator, and usually you put it in there with a, a book. And I would write down in the book whatever it was I had at that meal. Usually with one of those four color pens so that I can indicate like breakfast versus lunch versus whatever. So, I had to get it online. Because when I uh, tried to find it in a retail store in person, I had a very, very hard time. And um, I was surprised at the hard time that I had, actually. Because I figured that uh, when you walk into Bed Bath & Beyond, for example, and you see an end cap that has 50 scales, all, all for food, measurement of food, that one of them would be small enough to fit into your pocket. No. And I was really surprised by that. So I, I trekked over a couple weeks trying to find that scale. I saw it online several times while I was looking for it. I was like, and I would I'd print out the thing and walk over to the guy at the store and say, do you have this? It would be like a food scale store, you know? Like, do you have this one? <laughs> no, I never saw That's a great idea. Yeah, why don't you sell it? <laughs> I got it as a gift from Don. Don, Don picked it up for me. So that was nice. Stationary food scale used to have two. Meaning something that sits in your kitchen. And this is not what I'm talking about. A stationary food scale that is like awful. Everybody's got like three of these, right? <laughs> Don't waste your money. Go get something like this that essentially does the same thing the portable scale does, but it just sits out. It's ready for you to use right away. And measuring scales. All right, so this time again. set of people who knew that these were all cups. I don't know why that is. But everybody else I know people this all too. Says a cup and three quarters, a cup and a half, half a cup. And it's because, you know, they're shape different. It's like, you know, the episode of uh, Sesame Street where they take 13 items and rearrange them and say, how many now? <laughs> when we when we go to a restaurant and we're presented with a cup cup of soup, it's often not a cup. And we have no idea until we start to, s to study in a volumetric way, some of us not being visual thinkers. I happen to, to be a visual thinker, um, a sp visual spatial thinker. You have to really sort of imagine, you know, if this was in, if, if the amount of soup that they gave you was in the container that you know would be a cup, how, how would it compare? That's really hard to do. I, I would take a cup measure with me sometimes when I, in the early days when I was measuring everything. I would take it and at least compare it to the cup and say, yeah, it's not a cup. Sometimes I'd be wrong. But if you don't have all this stuff, you're, it's like going into battle on weaponry. Let's just look. Something powerful about My point to that is that cooking empowers you from, from, the, from the point of view that we're talking about today. 
cooking in your own kitchen empowers you. And it gives you the ability to uh, control what it is that you're eating. You can have as many brownies as you want because you know exactly what's in those brownies. And you, you can have as many brownies as you want in comparison to your BMR. So we're paying attention to that number. You don't know how to cook? Big deal, learn how to cook. You don't think you can? Try again. There are lots of places that you can read in to find out. Again, this was bringing in the technology component, but it's very true. If you go to wikihow.com or youtube.com or Simply Recipes or Food Network or cooks.com or Epicurious, you will find more information than you could possibly take in about this topic. Let's go to Simply Recipes because it's one of my favorites. And for example, let's say I'm interested in pork. So this is sort of just like a food blog that is, uh, essentially gives you recipes over time. It gives you instructions. Does it give you the nutritional value? No, but I can work out the nutritional value. And, like and I probably like will. Places that tell you yeah, and there are places that tell you that information too. Like cookbooks. Let's see. Yeah. See, very often the recipe will come without nutritional value. And so my point is though, if I had this, I can work all this out. I, I know exactly. And plus, I mean, their nutritional value may be for a different amount of fat in their pork. Or I may decide to take out the chunky tomato sauce. I'm going to take out the chunky tomato sauce. But, uh, and of course salt has no caloric information to it. But, the corn tortillas, I mean, if you pick up six different corn tortilla packages, you're going to have six different caloric numbers. And so their number may not mean anything anyway. Um, it's a good rule of thumb. And when they make that information available, it gives me a good way of sizing up that recipe. Mm -hmm. That being said, I, I usually take those recipes and I, I reevaluate them again. And there are others. All recipes. That's, that's actually one that, where they do make the nutritional information available. Uh, we're going to healthy living. You know, the diabetic recipes. sure that they had the uh, nutritional information for that. At any rate, we will look at another site where we can get more nutritional information than we could shake a stick at. Okay, coming into the home stretch. Like I said, I started off with about 350 pounds. And when I started to pay attention this time, I was around 305, 310. And when I started recording, I was exactly at 300, and that was in uh, April of 06. I was done by January, February of 07. And you can see my progress. And I actually used caloriecount.com in order to record my progress, my calories, my food, my everything, for a long time before I got into, into this. And when I say this, I'm talking about what I do now. I write down everything that I eat. And I've been doing this for months. It's easy to do. You may think that it's tedious. It's not. It's more tedious to try and guess what I ate today. Um, and I can go back at any time and tell you exactly how much I weighed. On um, 10.22, I was 195 pounds. On 1020, I was 193 pounds. On 915, I was 190 pounds. I'm just sort of on a low end at that point. How often did you weigh yourself? Every day. Really? Every day, same time, usually. If I miss it, I don't fret, but um, I don't miss it very often. Because I want to have, uh, one of the things that uh, the Hacker's Diet talks about is a thermostat. 
where you essentially know what direction that you're going by weighing yourself. You have to have, like anything else, we talk from an HR perspective, you have to have assessment. And so by, by assessing your weight, you know where you are. You know that you either have, can have to go up or have to go down or have to stay the same. Or you know, in any sort of planning instance, you need to have feedback and you need to have assessment. This is your assessment. This is your way of knowing where you stand, right? In leadership classes, it's all we talk about is assessment, yes. Do you weigh yourself in the first thing in the morning or at night? I do weigh myself first thing in the morning, and it is important for me to do it up at the same time every day because tides affect that. And I can sometimes go up and down three pounds in a day um, according to what time I weigh myself. So it's usually the first thing when I get up, I usually get um, undressed um, or I remain undressed and weigh myself so that I don't have clothes interfering with my weight. And I just make a record. I usually remember what it is because it's usually not dramatically different from day to day. Uh, your question. Just on what you're doing, you have the total amount of calories that you can eat during the day. Yep. Is there like going out for dinner and yep. rearrange how you eat those? Absolutely. I, we yeah. talk about a 24 hour scale. So mm -hmm. I know, and I, I have a, a groove that I've fallen into where I essentially eat like 100 calories for breakfast, which is nothing. It's usually a piece of matzo or something. And then for lunch, I'll like have 900 calories. And then for dinner, I'll have between four to 600 calories. And then for the rest of the night, um, it all depends on your plan. But generally speaking, that's my plan, is uh, four major intervals. And I know that I should be, it, like, sometimes we'll have a meeting in the morning and I'll offer coffee and bagels. And I'll know that that's gonna cost me 300 calories. So I'll say, that'll be my breakfast for 300. That means I have 700 for lunch. You know? Once you have that groove, once you break it out, it's really easy for me because 2,000 is, you know, shh, 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 right? I know around 500 calories will get me from section to section to section. Next question. Yes? Do you monitor your salt intake? No. no. I, I keep getting this question, and I'm, I'm, um, I understand where it's coming from, but I think that there is a, I think that there is a um, belief that salt has a huge impact on weight retention. It, it does have an impact on water retention, but it's not long term. Over over time, that you'll be able to break through whatever salt is doing to you. If you have hypertension, or if you have some other reason why you should be avoiding salt, that's a good enough reason to avoid it. But don't avoid salt because you think you're going to retain weight because of it. It just is not true. At least it wasn't true for me. Another question? Yes. You stayed at 2,000 during your whole weight loss, and you still remain at 2,000? No, no, not at all. Very good question. When I started, I was 350 pounds. A good way to determine your BMR just off the top of your head is weight times 10. So I was 3,500 calories I had to eat in order to maintain that weight. That's actually hard to do, eat 3,500 calories. I was doing it every day and going up. <laughs> so take your own weight, multiply it by 10. If it's me, it's 1950 and you have a good idea of where you should be eating as far as being on, okay? Then, if you wanna lose, you take that number and you shave off 200 or 300, 500 at the most, and you'll start to lose weight very quickly at 500. Uh, depending on your frame and your metabolism and all those things, you need to determine, start with like 200 and work your way down. But, so for me, at 3,500, I was able to go down to 3,000 calories and lo lost weight very quickly. Now, that would be a thousand more calories than I have in a day, but I never missed it because I wasn't paying attention to it before. So if you pay attention to it you're, and you know what that number is, you have a lot more control over it. But when you go to Bertucci's and you eat a 4,000 calorie pie, you know, or something, you have no way of knowing. You have no way of knowing. I'm gonna show you something because I think it's funny, especially for those of you who have known me for a long time. When I lost my weight, I made a video and put it up on YouTube. And the video, is this. I'll cut to the chase. So, I sort of introduce myself and say, I lost the weight and now I'm gonna shave in order to do this. And I, I hadn't shaved in 15 years. Shaved off, you know, my whole beard. And so this was like a special little thing that I did. And like, 
over 8,000 people have come to see me shave my beard. <laughs> 50 of which have left, left comments that were printable. <laughs> right? So, I mean, sometimes just weird stuff. Somebody came along and left a, a lyric from a uh, Aqualon. <laughs> so I finished the lyric. I, I don't know what that was about. Somebody tells me I look like somebody. Somebody said, you know, wow, with the beard, you look 37. With that, you look 30. Hey, I'm 34, so I must be right on. <laughs> <laughs> so, you can still hear me crunching in the background. Um, <laughs> It, it was really nice. This was one of the ways that I engaged community differently than Ryder, right? Because the people at Ryder who knew me were often afraid to approach me. They were like, what's going on with that, you know? <laughs> Meanwhile, I was very happy and, and um, had a really good time. Let me just visit my website so that you know what I'm talking about when I say that the video, this video will be here. Uh, I'm gonna put a post up and it'll look something like this. It'll say, John was happy to present at Healthy You at Rider. There'll be a video that you can click on and then my presentation, which you can actually just slide through like this, right? So anybody who you think would benefit from this talk, please pass it on to them. Again, this is not a commercial site. I'm not advertising on it. Nobody's making any money. <coughs> John, can I ask you a question? Sure. Um, I think every single one of us in this room probably has a downfall. Were there downfalls you had to avoid? Like, are you a big chocolate eater or sweet eater? I love chips? chocolate. I love chocolate, but I don't avoid it. Um, and th that aversion thing was a, was a big issue for me. I'll tell you what my thing was, was pizza. Mm -hmm. I love pizza. I absolutely love bread. I love great cheese on it, and I love, but very often the caloric information isn't available. So that was a downfall for me. And I struggled. I mean, I had a real, philosophical struggle with that for a very long time. Mm -hmm. One that doesn't make sense to me anymore because now I just know, I know better. I, I know enough about the, the food that, that I can control. I know if it's really oily, it'll be this much more. If it's, you know, if it's one slice or whatever, it's going to be somewhere in this range. And usually I overcompensate for that in my log. I'll say this was a slice and it was 200 calories. When in my heart of hearts, I know it's probably more like 150. But you haven't had was it a struggle initially to keep yourself to one piece of pizza or one piece of chocolate? Or still, still a struggle to keep myself to one piece of pizza, but I enjoy pizza a lot more now. After I got past that, that's a great question. After I got past that, I learned to appreciate it. What I realized, the first thing I realized was that um, I didn't appreciate food at all when I was really heavy. Not in the least. I didn't respect it. I didn't pay attention to it. It was just something that passed my lips. Now, when I eat a meal, it's like a celebration. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's really an enjoyment, and it's like any other great thing in your life. You know, if you have a really great meal, you know that you're. To me, the two thousand is like two thousand dollars that I get to spend every day. Right. You know, so if you think about it in that way, you you start to have a different appreciation for it. But yeah, I mean, there there are key foods, Asian, most any Asian food, Indian, uh, Chinese. I love. But very often, you have no idea what's in it. But your method allows you to have a lot and then say, all right, now I know I'm just going to have to cut down to dinner. Yeah, I, I, my method allows me to eat anything at all, really as much as I want, because I, my sense of pull is much different now, too. <laughs> I, would, I would eat way past pull before, right. until the TV show is done. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I'm going to show you one site, just because we're, we're right up on time. Um, somebody name a food that they're interested in. Ice cream. Ice cream. Good one. the Daily Plate, and it's essentially a database of food from all different sources, McDonald's, Burger King, uh, Cold Creamery, you know, 
and it says if you want to eat 1.5 cups, it'll be 455 calories. If you say I ate this, it adds it to your record and begins to do some tracking for you. And it does things like tells you how many carbs and how much fat and how much protein and all these sorts of things. You can save that meal if you ate it. Let's say you added a whole bunch of things. You added celery and onions and tomato and uh, fat-free dressing and croutons. You could save that as a salad and make it your own salad that you would just add because you eat it all the time. Or you could go, if you already find a salad somewhere at some commercial outlet like Saladworks or McDonald's, that's already in there, right? So if I go back and I do a search on McDonald's, and I want to get a snack wrap. Again, it gives me nutritional facts. I say I ate this. I'll add it to today. How much does this belong to? Does it cost to belong to? Me? Absolutely free. It just gather free. information from. Yeah. Tells me how many calories I should eat today. Mm. Of course, I'm not logged in. It's not me. But if I log in, gave them my information, it means that they can begin to track me. That's how, that's how I used CalorieCount.com. And it wasn't until I found that tool that I even knew such a tool existed. We've already talked about defending your rights. The one thing I want to say is, if you have a choice to go to McDonald's versus Cheeburger Cheeburger, you should go to McDonald's because McDonald's makes the nutritional information available. If you go to Cheeburger Cheeburger, you're just guessing. You have no idea. I already talked about exercise too. The exercise for me was just about feeling good. I encourage everybody to exercise, but don't exercise because you feel like that's the way that you're losing weight. You're losing weight because you're paying attention to the calories that you're taking in. It's much easier to not eat a cheeseburger than to try and burn it off on the treadmill. It's so much easier. Yes? No alteration at all, because it's still calories. Those cal calories are present no matter what. And it's, it's a great question, but again, uh, to me, that's a component, that's a food type that has very little to do with the most important thing to me as somebody who's trying to lose weight. For me, it's about losing weight via reduction of calories. Yes? There's some packs that you Stop and shop in the candy aisle right next to the regular bars. They're all over the place. You, you'll start to see this 100 calorie sort of banner. They're doing it on soup, they're doing it on uh, snack foods, they're doing it basically everywhere. The things that I encountered when I was obese I had a very so, a low self image and a low self worth, very clearly. And I still retain some of that, even though I've, I've left that body. And so I work every day to remind myself that I'm, I'm able to be respected just like anybody else. And it doesn't matter what your body type is. But you're fed so many cues as you walk through the day when you're, when you're walking like this that there's something wrong with you. People, people like, you know, they react to your presence. And it's, it's unfortunate, but it's true. External bias and prejudice is everywhere. Um, when you're obese, you're more likely to have diabetes, you're more likely to have heart disease, and I personally had sleep apnea, although there's apparently no causal relationship between obesity and sleep apnea. Um, I had to wear a mask in order to sleep and not stop breathing at night. And so one of the best things in life now is not having to put on a mask at night. But it's just unfair. I'm sorry? Just unnoticed this drastic difference. He, he I, I would just be a form. <laughs> he, I don't think he realized. He realized that I was more active. He realized that I was more willing to, you know, do stuff with him. Thank you all very, very much for your time. Thank you. And remember, this video will be up on themasty.com. So.